Must be laundry day at the Ives household. What's going on here, Dan, in a muted outfit? Anyway, good to see everybody's favourite media ho slash Tesla bull Dan Ives talking this time to Doomberg, explaining why Tesla is the most undervalued AI opportunity in the market. Welcome back. Time now for Notable Calls, when we take a look at what analysts are doing with their price targets and ratings on high-profile stocks. Today, we have a bonus for you. We have a live interview with Dan Ives. He's an analyst who follows this stock, Tesla. He's also global head of tech research at Wedbush. And uh, Dan, you recently raised your price target on Tesla just yesterday, I believe, uh, to 400 US dollars per share earlier uh, in a uh, uh, throw to break. We uh, incorrectly said it was 300. Your new target is 400 on this stock. Why so? I mean, look, uh, the Trump administration changes the game. It's a game changer for Tesla in terms of the autonomous vision. I think it's going to accelerate autonomous cyber cap two to three years. The AI story is worth a trillion dollars alone. Trump in the White House for Musk, it's a bet for the ages that's going to pay off in trillions. How, uh, how important is the fact? Now, I just quickly wanted to elaborate a little. Although this is stating the obvious, sometimes it is worth taking a moment to state the obvious. I'm speaking to you now in late 2024. Donald J. Trump is currently president-elect, but not yet in office. That happens early next year in 2025. So Donald Trump will be in the White House in 2025, 26, 27, and 28. That is a four-year run, a stretch of time, nearly half a decade, during the most crucial time in Tesla's history as a company, as they transition from producing the best electric vehicles on earth by far, and one of the only companies actually making money doing so, to completely disrupting transportation with autonomy, deploying their fleet of robo-taxis, both the dedicated Cybercab plus the robo-van, and also enabling autonomy on their existing vehicles via a software update. While this is happening, they're also going to be massively scaling up production of their humanoid robots, battery production, further localizing supply chain, battery materials, everything from mining and refinement all the way through to battery cells, the packs, the vehicle production, creating likely hundreds of thousands of jobs, playing a pivotal role in AI, benefiting from and contributing to a thriving, booming US economy, and growing to such a scale from an investor's point of view that we'll look back on Tesla in 2024 and wonder if there's been a typo. Is there a digit missing? What's going on? So Dan talks about this in terms of trillions, plural. He's right. One may even suggest that Tesla is about to become unburdened by what has been. The fact that Musk seems to be very close to the incoming president these days. He's going to be right next to him, wherever he goes. I mean, ultimately, he's not going to have a cabinet position, but he's going to be a significant seat at the table when it comes to AI, China tariffs innovation in the U.S., EV tax credits clearly will get pulled. And that's why I think it's actually something where for big tech, they want Musk to have a seat at the table because he understands AI and the ecosystem as well as anyone. But look, when it comes down, the biggest winner from the Trump trade is Musk and Tesla. It's a champagne moment right now for Tesla investors. We see this on its way to a $2 trillion mark cap. I have to give credit to Dan for recognizing the massive upside for Tesla under a Trump administration. Many of his colleagues on Wall Street don't seem to get it, though when it comes to analysts and Tesla are not getting it, what's new? But I kind of had a lot of conversations leading up to the presidential election with people, both in private and a few in public. There seems to be this perception among many investors that a Trump presidency would be bad for Tesla, would be negative for the company. And when I dug a little bit deeper, the reasoning very very shallow was, well, well Trump, Trump says mean things about electric vehicles sometimes when he's pandering to people in, in certain states that are dependent on the fossil fuel industry. Doesn't that mean he hates electric vehicles? And the answer is no. He's just pro-choice for people to choose the kind of vehicle they want to buy. But Trump greatly respects Elon Musk, repeatedly calling him a genius, the genius, the greatest genius of our time, saying we need to protect them, to celebrate them, blah, 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 crediting the guy. Trump's favorite news story is describing watching the SpaceX Starship 5 come back down and land on a launch tower. First attempt, absolutely insane. He can't shut up about it. He loves and respects Elon Musk, as he should. Now, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade here, but I don't think Tesla will get favorable or unfairly kind treatment from a Trump administration. It's just they're not going to have an actively hostile administration, which is the current state of things. Biden talking about investigating Elon a few years ago, then next minute, lawsuits, investigations, all kinds of BS. Department of Justice and other arms of government 
being weaponized against Musk and his companies to slow the guy down, never mind the relentless attacks from many Democrats and most of the hate stream media. But that's not why this is so beneficial to Tesla. A Trump administration, the real benefit to Tesla is Trump is going to catalyze the US entering an era of abundance, of economic prosperity, removing regulatory burdens, meaning shit can get done faster, lowering tax rates. He's talked about lowering the corporate tax rate meaningfully for companies who produce their products in the US, fully deductible interest on car loans for vehicles produced in the US. And remember, Tesla makes the most made in US vehicles. There's a lot of people that don't know this, but there's a lot of US based companies, e.g. Ford and so on, who people assume are an American automotive manufacturer, but actually make some, if not all of the parts of their vehicles outside the US. In some cases, assembling the vehicles outside the US, but then selling them back in the US. Trump wants US manufacturing jobs and Tesla already has the most made in US vehicles. They've got to benefit the most. Never mind the fact that Tesla today, already one of the world's largest employers, and in the US specifically, one of the biggest manufacturing employers, and they're scaling it at a ridiculous rate. In short, Trump wants US jobs. Trump loves US manufacturing. The US economy is going to boom. Cost of living is going to come down. People are going to see strong growth in wages, strong employment, economic prosperity, and companies that want to get shit done, manufacture products, innovate, and scale rapidly will prosper and thrive under the Trump administration. That's the real benefit to Tesla here. It's big picture stuff, a booming economy, a lack of regulatory hurdles, and strong incentives for companies manufacturing products in the US, creating jobs in the US. That's the big win. And you say autonomous, uh, the autonomous vehicle project and artificial intelligence, the two of course would be related to one another, worth uh, one trillion at Tesla. Uh, tell us why. Yeah, and look, I think, I'd argue Tesla's the most undervalued AI play in the market today. Autonomous is really the, the, the true, that's the goal at the end of the rainbow when it comes to Tesla. Autonomous, I think this could get accelerated. By the end of next year, we could be looking at cyber cap potentially on the road. Regulatory now gets thrown out the window. This is going to be a laissez-faire, almost a defanged beltway. And, and that's bullish, not just for big tech, but especially for Tesla when it comes to autonomous. And I think that's going to be, that's a key part of the value in this name. And that's why the bears, they can see AI and autonomous in their spreadsheets. Bro, this motherfucker, I swear, he's stealing my lines. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of half trolling, but am I? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Is Dan borrowing my material or is it a coincidence and we both have just decided to troll the dim-witted, short-sighted, box-ticking analysts covering Tesla? And he does have a valid point. The reason I roast the analysts in this way is because most analysts covering Tesla, especially in the early days, but even still, they're automotive analysts for the most part. And their brain is operating on automotive analyst mode. Their spreadsheet is an automotive valuation spreadsheet. Anything that they can't stick in their Tesla's just a car company valuation model doesn't exist. Autonomy doesn't exist. Implications of the humanoid robot doesn't exist. FSD licensing doesn't exist. The thing that gets me the most is the severe lack of courage among most of the analysts on Wall Street. Let me explain. If you're an analyst, it's against the law to be wrong, but only wrong in a specific way. If you completely miss an opportunity, completely ignore it until after it manifests itself, costing your clients potentially two, three, four, five, ten 10x because you didn't see what was around the corner. You didn't analyze and predict ahead of time. No one cares. You just chase after, catch up, and then integrate everything that suddenly now has already manifested itself, and no one seems to notice. It doesn't seem to be a reputational or career penalty for that. There should be. On the other hand, if you go out on a limb and actually display some amount of courage, little testicular fortitude, sorely lacking among most analysts, let's be honest, and actually predict something that looks likely to occur in the future that has not yet happened, whether you weight that in terms of probabilities or have a rough timeline or a fairly specific target, if you don't perfectly accurately assess that, you'll be chased out of town and laughed out of your industry. In other words, among most analysts, courage is punished, which is why we find ourselves in this doom loop. Analysts, on average, miss out on massive growth opportunities over and over and over, huge disruption every fucking time. They miss it because it requires too much courage to go out on a limb and say, look, I see something happening here. It's brewing. I don't know exactly when it's going to manifest, but here's what I think it looks like when it does. It's a few years into the future, but I can see it brewing. Huge opportunity, maybe by now as opposed to after the fact. You do that, it's the end of your career on Wall Street. I think the entire way that analysts assess a company and the valuation typically is just completely fucking broken. I mean, it blows my mind. You hear things from supposedly intelligent people, analysts, investors, and so on, specifically relating to Tesla, 
Tesla doesn't already have robo taxis on the road, so I can't include anything to do with autonomy in my 10 year valuation model yet because I don't have any numbers to put in there yet. <laughs> Pussies. Your job as an analyst, right, is to analyze. Use your brain and some balls and go, hang on. I know it's not happening today, but it seems to be brewing. What would it look like? What could it look like? What's the probability it'll be achieved? When will it? What's the cost per mile on the autonomous rides? What's Tesla's profit margin on those? How many miles per vehicle? How many vehicles operating autonomously? That's the whole point. But as I said, you dare to display that level of courage on Wall Street, you'll clearly be thrown in prison for the rest of your life for having too much confidence and courage. Much better to be a pussy and just wait until after the opportunity so you can put the numbers in your spreadsheet once they've already appeared as opposed to analysing and anticipating. Credit to Dan here for the low-key roast of his colleagues. When they're sitting there in their hibernation caves. <laughs> uh, you, all, you referred to uh, EV subsidies being pulled. Uh, that, uh, on the surface, sounds like a negative for Tesla, but I think where you're going with that is you think Tesla can uh, compete and outcompete in a uh, in a environment where some players are not being subsidized by the public purse, correct? That's exactly, I mean, you nailed it. Uh, it's a negative for the industry, especially the Detroit Big Three, GM, Ford, Stellantis, bullish for Tesla. That they, No one will match their scale and scope. I'd expect this to get pulled in January. And I also expect more and more, when we come Inflation Reduction Act and some of these other initiatives, more of that focus is going to be on AI, which is bullish for Tesla, bullish for big tech. And that's why for big tech investors, it continues to be. the In the AI party, it's 10 p.m., and this party goes to 4 a.m. Tell us uh, tell us what uh, Tesla's doing on AI. How, how clearly has Musk uh, sketched out the, uh, the AI ambitions of this company? I think it's about autonomous. I think it's full self-driving. It's robotics, Optimus. That's the future of Tesla. But it goes back to, Paul, in 2007, I've covered tech 25 years. They viewed Apple as a hardware company when they launched iPhone. Now look at it. They said Microsoft wasn't going to cloud player. Look at that today. NVIDIA, AI dismissed in 2022. Now it's going to be a champagne moment and lobster roll moment for Musk and Tesla shareholders. Dan out here spitting some facts. Actually, quite a few facts. So the big takeaway from today's video, other than the fact that Dan is shockingly nailing it when it comes to Tesla, most of his colleagues still absolutely no idea, is Dan's accurate belief that Trump is worth trillions to Tesla. Not a trillion, trillions, plural. He's right. And I still, I feel like I'm dreaming. I feel like I'm going to wake up. The best possible circumstances for Tesla have manifested themselves in the most critical time for the company as they go through a massive growth phase from producing cars and making a little bit of money selling them plus a couple of batteries to completely disrupting transportation and going berserk with autonomy holy fuck the future looks bright want more content early access a bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 is awesome i've been taking it daily now for more than three years it's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps it's packed full of vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus has prebiotics probiotics and adaptogens to improve gut health regularity and help your body handle stress i'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best which is why i haven't missed a day of ag1 for more than three years and i haven't missed a daily video in more than three years must be a coincidence right just try it and see how you feel Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. 
It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. And look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.